Did the Green Bay Packers miss their window trying to trade Aaron Rodgers? Or put another way, was the best time for them to have traded him last year? Did they miss an opportunity? Did they make a mistake? Plus, if they are going to trade Aaron Rodgers, what would that look like? Who are the teams that could even be interested, who could pay a price Green Bay would accept with a new report that the Packers would only look in the AFC? Does that make sense? We'll talk about all of it on today's show. You are Locked On Packers, your daily Green Bay Packers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Today's episode brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM. You can get a 100% free boost on your franchise with the promo code locked on at ultimate gm.com. So we got this updated. Is that what we're going to do? Um, The Adam Schefter report that um, the Packers are only interested in a potential trade in the AFC. We heard from Aaron Rodgers. He's not ready to make a decision. He's not ready to to even say, I will play or not play. And here's the thing. One of the reasons why you wouldn't do that is if he wants to be traded or the Packers want to trade him, it makes the most sense for Aaron Rodgers to hold that retirement card Aaron Rodgers, I think, knows what the Packers want to do. They've communicated it to him. And he is in the process of deciding, okay, what makes the most sense for me? And maybe maybe retirement is on the table. By the way, no one I've talked to and no reporter that, that has any connections to anyone thinks Aaron Rodgers is going to retire. Now, that doesn't mean he's not going to. I'm just telling you. No one thinks that's happening <laughs> in or around the league. Um, maybe not literally no one, but the the vast majority consensus, um, at least based on the, the feel that I get, is everyone thinks he's going to play in 2023. But he has to hold that card as leverage because that's his only leverage at this point. He's under contract. We're going to talk about the contract in a second. But I wanted to I wanted to have this part of the discussion because... This idea of compensation on the only trading to the AFC, like we're gonna we're gonna get into all of that today, and I think all of it is is potentially important in the way that we're thinking about this, in the way that that we're we're actually treating all of this. And I had a conversation with Wendell Ferreira, who um, does some writer for zone uh, some work for Zone Coverage um, for Cheesehead TV, someone that that I've known at least via Twitter. Um, for a long time and someone who I think, you know, thinks about these things in a, in a reasonable, intelligent way. You know, he's not like, I feel like there are times occasionally when I use a person on Twitter basically as a, a stalking horse or as, um, sometimes a straw man, you know, I'll admit that like, Hey, this person said this to me, or these people are saying this thing. And I, I know that like a lot of people aren't saying that, but enough people generally in those cases are saying a thing that I think is dumb um, <laughs> that I need to respond. This is I don't think Wendell is dumb or wrong here, but his opinion on this is that it was actually a mistake to not do this last year, to not have traded Rodgers last year, in part because the contract is so prohibitive. And, and this was something that Jason Fitzgerald over at Over the Cap mentioned on Twitter yesterday. That if Rodgers leaves this year without changing the contract, it essentially becomes a one-year, $100 million deal. 
which is wild, right? But it's not about the money. Tell me again, it's not about the money. And I will tell you for the one bazillionth time that it is in fact about the money because you guys, it's always about the money. Okay. So, okay. So this idea that the Packers should have done this a year ago, I think it's really easy to say that in hindsight. And I know that there were people like Wendell, like Tyler Dunn, like, you know, Tyler Dunn was saying it two years ago, saying it's time. It's time to trade Aaron Rodgers. And what I was saying was it, and still believe it was the right move to say he's been playing like an MVP for the last two seasons. If he is going to continue to play this way, and we had no reason at the time to believe he wouldn't, you know, if, if he was going to atrophy at 39, why, why didn't he atrophy at 37? Then you, you're fine signing to a, a deal that's going to be a two or three year deal. And, you know, the, the pushback that I got from, from Wendell and from, from my friend Monty and, and, and others on Twitter was, well, but they were never going to be a true contender in 2022. Well, well, maybe, but um, the, the odds makers thought they were going to be, they were, they were co-favorites or second favorites um, going into the season. Most people thought this was a conference contender. They didn't expect Aaron Rodgers to get hurt and to play much worse than he had previously. We didn't expect Rashawn Gary to tear his ACL for Adrian Amos's play to regress for Russell Douglas to be out of place in the slot for Devondre Campbell's play to regress significantly. And for this offensive line thing, at least for the first six or so weeks, to be such a, a deal. We expected Elton Jenkins to be back pretty soon. We expected David Bakhtiari to be ready by week one because why wouldn't we? 18 months post-surgery, like you've got to be ready, but... He wasn't because this was a unique situation. We just didn't know all of those particulars at the time. I, I think it made sense for the Packers to do what they did. Now, here's there's two pieces to this. The first is I don't think you can argue that they they misjudged this team because the plan worked. Like the draft, if if the draft was the only avenue that they were going to use to make this team better, it worked. Christian Watson is a star. Zach Tom looks like a future le- legitimate starting left tackle. Romeo Dobbs looks like a starting caliber receiver. Devontae Wyatt had a lot of flashes. Quay Walker played more than any rookie linebacker in the league. Just made the PFWA all-rookie team. Even if I think mm, part of that is just because he was one of three guys who played a lot. Um, And, and so... Like that, those guys really helped your team. They, they, Rudy Ford was, was good for this team until he wasn't, but like it, the thing worked. Sammy Watkins was good until he got hurt and then never really recovered. And by that time, Romeo Dobbs had ascended. Christian Watson had ascended. And so you didn't really need Sammy Watkins anymore. I would contend that the thing that they thought was that the offense would get a little worse. It did still top 10 by DVOA. And the defense would get better. Jair Alexander coming back. You bring back Russell Douglas, Devondre Campbell. You use your top two draft picks on defensive players. And another year in the system with Joe Barry, you should be better. They just weren't. So that's that's part number one. Part number two is the timeline of this, of, of this roster. This roster is young. I wrote about this today for The Leap. If you look at the top 10 cap hits on this team, only two guys are over 30. It's Aaron Rodgers and David Bakhtiari. That's 2023 cap hits. And Aaron Rodgers might, might not be on the team. It's Aaron Rodgers, 39. David Bakhtiari, 31. Kenny Clark is 27. Jair Alexander is 25. Aaron Jones is 28. Preston Smith is 30. Think of the other guys that I didn't even mention. Rashawn Gary, Elton Jenkins, Russell Douglas is 27, Eric Stokes, A.J. Dillon, and then this really good rookie class. They're going to have another rookie class coming in, potentially with some picks involved in it. I think there are a lot of reasons to think that that not only did this team play it the right way, believing that this team would work, but that the contract that was signed was about more than just 
this past season. It was about more than just 2022. It was about 2022 and 2023 because they couldn't take a significant step forward. They were not involved in the A.J. Brown deal. No one was outside of Philadelphia. That was a very unique situation. And then what was the other move out there for them to make? So they thought, okay, give ourselves a chance. Aaron Rodgers means we're a top three team in the conference no matter what. And if the defense plays a little bit better and the offense takes a little bit of a step back, that's 11-12 wins. That gives you a shot in a soft, mushy NFC, which is exactly what it was. If the 2021 Packers had been in the 2022 season, they would have been the favorites in the NFC. They probably would have won 13, 14 games. They would have been a top two seed. But they didn't play that way. But that brings us to the contract. The Packers said, and the assumption at the time was, this contract is for two years, maybe three. Mark Murphy said it's really more year to year. Aaron Rodgers said it's really more year to year, but it's not. This $58 million roster bonus makes it essentially punitive for Aaron Rodgers to be on the team in 2023 because in 2024, trade, retire, whatever, it's a huge number on the 2024 cap. Why did it have to be that way? If this is year to year, why did it have to be that way? He was on the books for like $24 million. So why did it, what, what, and and the answer is so that he could get his money. That's the answer. So he could get his money and he could show, I got my 50 million per year. That's the answer. So let's, let's be unequivocal about that part of it. But Aaron Rodgers on Pat McAfee's show yesterday said, if I come back, we'll just rework the deal. We'll move things around. Now, he importantly did not say, I will take a pay cut because he's not gonna. He's just not gonna. And I didn't say he had to, but he's not gonna. You can you can move the money from the roster bonus and push it forward and make it base salary future, but then it's gotta be guaranteed. It's like there's, there's all these mechanisms that you have to build into it. You could just rip up the contract and, and write something new. I don't expect Aaron Rodgers is gonna do that. What they did was, they put in all of these accounting tricks so that he'd be a low number on the cap last year and a low number on the cap this year. That's what they did. And that is smart in a way. And then maybe they had some sort of handshake agreement that, okay, if it is time to move on, we'll just rip this up and do something else. And maybe that's what they'll ultimately do. Maybe that's what, if Rodgers is traded, a new team will do. Say, hey, this doesn't really work for us. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get you this money. We'll just get it to you in another way and figure that part of it out. But that was not the contract that needed to be signed. It's the contract that the Packers and Aaron Rodgers agreed to. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that made the most sense in this situation, but it is what Aaron Rodgers wanted. And the Packers made it pretty clear at that time that they were going to do whatever Aaron Rodgers wanted. Maybe part of that is because you're staring down the face of losing Devontae Adams. And that only amplified Aaron Rodgers' leverage to say, pay me Texas with a dollar sign. And that's ultimately, that's ultimately what they did. We'll see what happens. So we're going to talk. I had someone reach out and say, can we please walk through some, some scenarios, some trades? How would this actually work if the Packers wanted to make it work? We will do that in just a second. Today's episode brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM. This is a a fun new app. I've been playing around on it. It has been really, really fun. Um, You've heard me talk about this. Um, I I competed with the Locked On NFL hosts. Um, Chris Carter from Locked On Steelers actually won. Um, If you listen to Locked On Sports today, you've you've heard me talk to Chris. And you, you you get to play GM. It's exactly what it sounds like. And that means not just drafting players, not just hiring coaches. It's things like hiring the right scouts and trying to um, make money off concessions and navigating your franchise through free agency and and all the ups and downs of the season. It is as real as as you're going to get in one of these games. And you can get a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use the promo code LOCKED. 
on in the game store. That's locked on. So make sure you check it out today. The download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app store, Ultimate Football GM. That's ultimate-gm.com. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Subscribe to Locked On NFL and get your daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories plus in-depth analysis on the biggest games with NFL key predictions every Friday and Monday. Local insiders cover the game with game-to-game episodes. Locked On NFL available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. So what, what actually makes sense here? And it's interesting, you know, Adam Schefter says, by the way, Every day for the last three days, it has gotten stronger, what Adam Schefter has said. It went from, "There's it's a real possibility, to I think the Packers will, and then it was, the Packers are going to, basically, gauge interest, and they do not want to send him to the NFC. Now, I think it's interesting that we, we got yesterday this narrative of like, all this information being out there is proof that it's the Packers who are instigating all of this and they're pushing him out and poor Aaron Rodgers and whatever. Like, uh, that's fine. I don't think that's the case. I've said over and over that I think that that both teams would like him to be back or there are scenarios for each side where it makes sense to them for him to be back. But I don't think there is a congruency in those scenarios. And I think ultimately that is what leads to a a parting of the ways. I think this is going to happen. And so, well, what actually makes sense? Peter King said he thinks the Jets will pay two first-round picks. Um, I'd like to add a, add a caveat to that. I think the Packers will ask for two first-round picks. And it will be a first-round pick and a future first. The other team might want to make it a conditional first on the future one if... You know, if Aaron Rodgers is on the team the following year, it's a first. If he's not, it's a second or whatever. That's that was sort of what Carson Wentz did. Although that was with incentives, like if the if they make the playoffs or if he plays a certain number of snaps in that first year, then it becomes a first round pick. That was a different circumstance because that was for a future pick, not for this year, and that does complicate things. I I've seen this idea. We talked about it yesterday that oh, they're going to get a second and then maybe a future conditional pick. No, no. They're going to get a, a a true blue. They're going to use it first round pick for sure. For sure. And then it's what happens after that. What makes sense? So then there's this NFC AFC question. And the thing about the NFC AFC question is I don't know how many NFC teams would have really been realistically in the market anyway. So that's the thing. Like, I guess you could say the commanders... Um, well, the Giants, I think, are going to pay Daniel Jones. So they're off the table. Um, the Seahawks seem like they're gonna they're gonna do Geno Smith, although there you know there's some buzz out there that they might want to do something else. And I just I I wonder I wonder what San Francisco is going to do, what position they're going to be in. It's interesting, right? It's interesting to think about a circumstance like that. There are plenty of teams, though, in the AFC that make sense. Now, the one NFC team that I think we should discuss is Carolina. Because they have a top 10 pick. They have receivers. They have an owner who is willing to spend a bunch of money. I I brought him up yesterday because I think he is a wild card in all of this. And if they come in with a big offer, you take it. And you say, okay, go win the NFC South. Fine. The NFC South is wide open. Yeah, do that. And the only reason the Saints aren't on this list is because Philadelphia owns their first round pick. I don't know what they could send. And if they send Chris Olave, like why does Aaron Rodgers want to go there? And who is his coach? That's the other interesting thing about this. There are eight teams currently without an OC. And there are some that don't have a head coach. And those might be related. Like Indianapolis, if Jeff Saturday gets that that uh, job, I don't know Aaron Rodgers played with Jeff Saturday, but I don't know that that becomes a particularly appealing option. I don't know that Jim Irsay cares about those things. 
but the Colts do have the number four overall pick. Like, if you told the Packers you can have the number four overall pick for Aaron Rodgers straight up, it's pretty appealing. It's pretty appealing. Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, you're almost certainly going to get one of those two guys, one of the best defensive players in the draft. That might be enough. Now, would Indianapolis do that? Um, I don't know. But Carolina has that top 10 pick. They certainly make sense here. They've got pieces. Good weather. Uh, Charlotte's a beautiful city. I don't know if it's it's got Aaron Rodgers written all over it, but if he gets to have some say in the process, that I think to me, that's why if you're going to do something like this, do it now. Because then, if you're in the building and you're Aaron Rodgers, doesn't doesn't that change everything about the situation? Like, if Aaron Rodgers goes to Carolina, doesn't Sean Payton suddenly go, well, wait, I'd go to Carolina. Like, doesn't that change the way that these coaches view these openings? I think it has to. So if you're Aaron Rodgers and what you want is some say over who the future offensive coordinator or head coach is, a, a situation like Carolina makes some sense. Las Vegas has been the popular one. The thing that makes this interesting is so, okay, right now, the team the team getting Aaron Rodgers is going to pick up, you know, a fraction of the cost of Aaron Rodgers, like $15 million on the cap this season because... You pick up that option bonus, you spread that out across the cap, and you don't have to you don't have to cover all of the extra money that the Packers have already been spread out because of the signing bonus. Well, I think one of the reasons why Aaron Rodgers would say we're going to redo that deal is so that he gets more new money in in a contract. It's not just the 60, it's the all right, I'm going to get 40 this year and then another 40 next year for sure, so that he can get a little bit more. How many teams are going to be willing to do that? Well, the Jets, they have deep pockets. Carolina, we know they have deep pockets. Mark Davis has like quietly been a little a little illiquid over the years, and so he's had some issues with some of this stuff. Las Vegas has the opportunity with seven this year. You start there with seven and a future first. If you're the Packers, that's what you're asking for. I've seen some people saying, you know, what about Max Crosby? Part of the appeal of that job for Aaron Rodgers is that he's got people there, that they're a quarterback away. And that was the original question on Twitter that I got on the scenarios was, who's a quarterback away? Well, Indianapolis is not a quarterback away. Like having a quarterback would help, but that offensive line is still a problem. Um, I think the defense has some, some key holes and the skill talent, like Alec Pierce is a nice young player. Packers Twitter favorite. Michael Pittman is a nice young player. Jelani Woods is a nice young player. But does Aaron Rodgers really want to babysit nice young players? The Packers have nice young players. It's not a better situation, even if you get to control the coach. Carolina, you have real players. Like, I think they might be a quarterback away from being a real player in the NFC. Which would be, if you're the Packers, a reason to not let them go And get Aaron Rodgers. Now, again, if they blow you out of the water, okay. Now, Las Vegas, there were some games that they played in that they just blew in the second half that that Derek Carr just gave away for them. If you're Aaron Rodgers, do you want to go see Patrick Mahomes twice a year? Do you want to go see Justin Herbert twice a year? You're probably fine seeing Russell Wilson twice a year. If you're if you're a Hall of Fame player, if you're you know someone of his caliber, Russell Wilson went. Russell Wilson went to Denver. Didn't deter him. If they want you. And you can live in Las Vegas and, you know, you can throw to Devontae Adams. That's pretty appealing. They instantly become an AFC contender with Aaron Rodgers. Now, are they a quarterback away? No, the defense is still a big problem. Um, we, they got to figure out what they're going to do with Josh Jacobs. Maybe you just say, okay, fine, we'll just draft somebody. But the asking price there is seven in a future first. I think you would settle for seven and a player, seven in Darren Waller. Because these top 10 draft picks just have more value. They just do. They just have more value. So if you're if you're looking at a situation like the Jets, the Jets have 13. The Jets are the option. 
They are the option. They are the team that should trade for him the most because they are the closest to being a quarterback away. They were 7-10, and 10, but they were 7-9 and nine going to the last weekend of the season, or I think they were 7-7 seven and seven at one point. They looked like they were a lock to make the playoffs. I think they, were, they even had a better record than that. It looked like they were going to make the playoffs. They collapsed on the stretch because they had to play Zach Wilson, almost called him Kyle again, and Mike White turned out to not be very good. Um, but they've got a lot of talent. And by the way, Aaron Rodgers mentioned the running back. That's good. Garrett Wilson, who's good. Um, and, you know, I, I, it's just interesting that, that Nathaniel Hackett is interviewing for that job. If you think you're going to make this deal, Peter King mentioned this. Peter King, not a, not a, uh, a clickbait guy said, could they hire Nathaniel Hackett to lure Aaron Rodgers? It would be the second time in two off seasons someone did that. But I think this time it could work because the Jets already made so much sense. And I think in this time, the Packers are actually in a position to not just have the motivation, but to have the incentive to move on from Aaron Rodgers. The Jets are the move. Then it's 13 and Corey Davis. You, you know, Again, 13 and future first is what you're looking at. But you land on 13 and Corey Davis or 13 and Elijah Moore or 13 and, I don't know, one of those linebackers, maybe. Um, you know, you're not going to get Quinn and Williams. You're not going to get Sauce Gardner. So stop dreaming about that stuff. But 13 and a second this year? Like, maybe that makes sense. Like, a second this year, it's like the Devontae Adams thing. A second this year is like a is like a first next year because of the way that they, you know, this is traditionally viewed by NFL teams. I don't think Tennessee makes sense. They're not a quarterback way. They're just not. I don't, like, the Patriots one is interesting to me, but they don't have the receivers. Now, maybe just the allure of working for Bill Belichick is, is one of those great things. I don't think so. I don't think that makes sense. I don't think Aaron Rodgers wants to follow that closely in Tom Brady's footsteps. I think for all those same reasons, I don't think Tampa is is in that same mix either. Like, I think... Tampa is playing in that sort of Derek Carr pool. Uh, Miami doesn't have a first round pick, even if they wanted to do something like that. And then Baltimore, you know, Baltimore might be a little bit of a dark horse if Lamar Jackson leaves, but I don't think that's happening. So again, the big one to write out in pen is the New York Jets. The New York Jets. The Packers could have 13 and 15 in this draft. If I had to predict today, my prediction would be that Aaron Rodgers is a New York Jet. I think the, I think the the finances work. Um, I think the incentives for both sides work. You can go play Nathaniel Hackett, potentially. And it's the AFC. And yes, you get to follow the Favre to a T. And I think Mayor Rodgers would relish following Favre to New York and doing what he couldn't. And that's win another Super Bowl. All right, we're going to be back tomorrow. Before we finish up, let's talk about our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is our new partner, and we could not be more excited about having them here. There are so many great features that make sports betting fun and easy. I used like all of them this year. I I had parlays. I had all kinds of props and anytime touchdown scores, and I thought... CD Lamb scores, and I'm like, oh man, I've got this. This is gonna be so great. I had this multi-pronged bet, and then I needed the Cowboys to cover. Come on, man. Come on. But I can do I can do you one better. You don't have to win a bet to win money with FanDuel. Peter, how could how could that be? They don't they don't just give you money. Well, they do at FanDuel because right now when you use the promo code locked on. For your first $5 bet, they will give you $150 in free bets, whether you win the bet or lose the bet. So you just, hey, here's the bet. Win or lose, here's more opportunities to go win. That's what FanDuel is going to do for you. So don't miss out. Place that first $5 bet and get $150 in free bets, win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. For your second listen, check out Locked On NFL, bringing you the local insights you love to the national spotlight with daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories locked on NFL available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. All right, back tomorrow. More this week. 
um, working on, on an interview for either tomorrow or Friday, trying to get it scheduled. So I will uh, let you know what's going on there when I get the chance. Follow me on Twitter to uh, get the early announcement on that one. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, by the way, when Aaron Rodgers makes a decision, we will go live. If the Packers trade him, we will go live on YouTube so you can stay locked on Packers.